my name is Muhammad Rami bin Arifin and today I'm going to do a film critic about Titanic and my main focus here is on the plot so what interesting about the plot here that I like is that even though the plot is not accurately correct or true to the historical he event back in 1912 where the Titanic is seen but I like uh, what they do to the story because some of the plot actually is true which is one of the plot is being the ship is seen and the historical culture the different class of people rich uh, middle and also the poor that's the element of where I think is actually accurate in terms of the historical side but what I like um, even more uh, that drives the plot or the story forward is that it takes you on a ride of two uh, people two young people which is it focus on the love story or the romantic side of two young people being in love which is if you think about it it actually happened in a disaster movie so even though the movie is actually uh, long about three hours more but every scenes for the movie kept it it is it is really necessary to be there and the pace of the movie is actually really good uh, because it tells you from the beginning of uh, in the modern day where they found the Titanic and then when the old lady tells uh, her story back then or when she aboard the Titanic and the rest it just came with the romantic side the, the disaster of course which is everybody will really predict even though they actually didn't watch the movie they will know that the Titanic will sing in the movie and even though most of the story are not true because the character in the movie are not actually real for example Jack Dawson and Rose is both fiction character but of course if you want to drive the story forward and make it interesting so you can have fictional character but other than that stay true to the historical side which is what happened to the Titanic but what uh, the what is interesting to me is that the ending of the Titanic which is where it sings and other than that it tells you the sacrifice of these two young people here which is Jack Dawson actually die at the end and leaving Rose alive with the other uh, passengers which is if you see in the movie he actually can still be alive but of course the director wanted to have a sad moment in the movie that people will uh, be shocked so that's part uh, that part of the plot which makes me like the movie more so that's all for now thank you i'm Marvina. i'm going to critic about the antagonist character kaiden carl hockley is the main antagonist in titanic movie he is the snobby fiance of rose the reed character who plotted to make her his wife as the movie takes place in 1912, 
He also view Rose has its property and only want to marry her simply because her mother wants to get out from that. Carl at first appears to be gentle and sweet around his fiance Rose, but later in the movie he gets physically and emotionally abusive with her after he find out she is in love with Jack. Throughout the movie, I found that Carl is jealously angered and violent. As we can see from the scene when Carl dispatches his bodyguard Love Joy to watch Rose every move because he was jealous and becomes furious after he find out she has joined up dancing with Jack in the third class party. He is violent as when he realized Rose would rather sing on the ship with Jack than survive and go on to marry him. He then snatches Love Joy gun and attempts to kill Rose Joy. He chasing them into the flooded first class exception until he run out of bullets. He is sarcastically shot at them. I hope you enjoy your time together. I hate Carl character because he is selfish and self-interested. For example, when he gets uh, a lifeboat saved by grabbing an abandoned child and pretending she is his aunt. We can see from the scene when Carl runs where the penultimate lifeboat is being filled and ready to launch, but he finds himself behind a large group of men and he finds a lost child crying behind them because of he cannot bribe any of the officials to let him aboard the lifeboat Carl's go back and grab the child that is so hurly and then convinces to the official by pretending he is a father since they were only taking women and children in that point so from there we can see that Carl is not a nice guy other than that, Carl also was so ruthless. For example, in the scene when Carl and Rose are having breakfast together, Carl has taught Rose to do what she was expected to do as a lady of society, but Rose explained to him that she was tired and stating that she is still her fiancé. But Carl loses his temper by flipping the breakfast table and telling her she may not be his wife by law, but she is in practice and had to honor him. Another scene is when Carl has slapped Rose and called her a little slut after he find out Rose has a friendship with Jack. However, I can see that Carl still has his another side of himself and he might have a heart somewhere when he passes up an opportunity to get on a lifeboat so he can go find Rose and convince to her to get a lifeboat for herself. Even though Rose has basically abandoned him but it's really incredible that he risks his own safety to go back for her. In overall, this movie is so amazing. James Cameron has successfully operating all the characters into the excellent position. Next, I will critique about the character of the Titanic. The protagonist of Titanic is Jack Dawson, played by Leonardo DiCaprio. Jack Dawson is a penniless artist who is able to board the Titanic in a lucky game of poker after the winning tickets. Jack boards the ship along with his friend, Fabricio, as well as Tommy Ryan, a fellow passenger from the third class. Jack spots Rose on the decks of the ship and later saves her from her suicide attempt. Rose's mother Ruth detests Jack, thinking him as a potential threat to the impending marriage of Carl and Rose. In my opinion, Jack Dawson is an interesting character as he is very humble and a happy-go-lucky type of guy. As we can see from the film, Jack's clothes are very different from the other third-class passenger on the ship, which also means that he is a working-class person that is doing the best that he can. Besides, Jack is honest 
and truthful as well as trustworthy and this can be se this can be seen when he was invited to the dinner after saving Rose's life from her suicide attempt he was honest about being poor instead of lying to everyone that he is rich he is comfortable with who he is and of course maybe he wants a better life but he would not going to fake being rich to get it jack is thought to be less important due to the fact that he is just a third class guy but it turns out that he has a special way of looking at everything which means that he is a direct contrast to um, Carl Hockley, Rose's fiance. Jack represents the, the needs of Rose and something that is missing from her relationship. Jack is indeed very nice and good looking guy, I have to admit, but I personally did not think that Jack respect the relationship that Rose has with Carl. Even though Rose is forced to by her mother to engage with Carl to save their family from her dad's death, um, that doesn't mean that Jack s simply can disrespect their relationship that way. He knows that Rose is engaged, but he did not stepping back. Instead, he is showing his effort to get Rose. But if we look this, this thing on the positive side, we can see that Jack has an undying love towards Rose. Okay, so to conclude, Jack Dawson is indeed um, a type of main character who will attract every viewer's attention as he has a great and humble personality though he is not wealthy and he comes from third class. But the humble personality and honesty of Jack are what make Rose fell in love with him and chose him over her fiancé Carl. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ahmad Shafizu Bikar bin Zulnazar and I am going to talk about this film called Titanic for the point of view. So this film doesn't have any funky or excitement in terms of uh, narrating. The this film tells story of the ship saying mostly uh, Rose flashback. There's the present day storyline but the 1912 storyline takes up most of the film at time. So there's some switching back and forth between the two time of period which is transition of young Rose and the old Rose or the old Rose to the young Rose. There is one thing interesting about this film from the storytelling perspective. The fact that we all know that the story ends up badly. So it's in the history. The ship sink. The Titanic ship sink. And if any of you say that, oh, the people have been saved, the Titanic have been saved, the ship doesn't wreck, there is no iceberg, is in in my backyard, no. Get your fact straight. <laughs> From the beginning of the film, Lewis Bondin, a member of the Levis crew, takes Rose, also the audience, through a detailed forensic analysis of how and when the ship went down. So. It's there's zero mystery about what exactly is going to happen on that front. Why do that? So, if your audience are likely know what's going to happen, well, you have to lean into it. And you can say that emphasizing the physical scale of what happened to the Titanic and creates anticipation for seeing it portrayed on screen. It's also mean that you pin your hopes for a happy ending on the love stories between Rose and Jack. Your call whether that's end up being satisfying. Assalamualaikum. Hi, I am Nurakila Yasmin Miti Jasli, and I will be the one who will be explaining about the themes 
in the movie that we have chosen which is Titanic so I will begin with the most overriding theme of this movie which is obviously love we can see that the love affair between Jack and Rose is the central narrative in this movie and we we can we can see that their relationship has led them in making a risky and faithful decisions just so that they can stay together and in addition to that um, Rose's interaction with Jack has slowly convinced her that an authentic and real relationship is actually far more valuable as compared to getting getting into a loveless marriage with Cal Hockley and then we moving on to the next theme which is greed greed is also one of the theme in this movie we can see we can see this through Rose's mother Ruth where she has forced her own daughter to marry Cal Cal Hockley. Cal Hockley is an abusive man. And even knowing the fact that he is an abusive man, Ruth still forces her daughter to marry him as she was having a financial problem at that moment. And as she was so terrified of losing her possessions, she's willing to do to do that. So, this pervasive elevation of greed over human lives has discussed Rose so severely that she made her own decisions to abandon her own mother and return to Jack. That's all from me. Thank you.